Joining us this evening on Loudwire Nights is the multi-talented Kat Von D. She's here to talk about her upcoming debut album, which is titled Love Made Me Do It. It arrives August 27th. Nice to meet you, Kat, even if it is <laughs> like virtually. <laughs> nice to meet you too. Thanks for taking the time. No, thank you for your time. I appreciate it. Uh, I want to start off with something that I was like kind of confused about initially, and that's that there's two versions of Love Made Me Do It. So yeah. there's the original, right, which is guitar heavy, Dave Grohl drumming on those. Then there's the the synth heavy version, which is what's going to be released August 27th. So I'm wondering why you went with like that version, the newer version first, since yeah. both are going to see the light of day, right? Yeah, totally. I mean, I mean, the first version isn't necessarily guitar heavy. There's just a lot more guitar. Um, and when I mean guitar, it's not going to sound like metal or anything. You know, a lot of, a lot of those like really uh, reverby, like cure, cure guitar. I guess style, but um, yeah. So I, I ended up. I, I wrote this album about ten years ago, and uh, during that time, I ended up going to London and having it produced with Adam Noble, who I was a huge fan of uh, his production work because he did like all my my favorite placebo records and and other bands that I really love. And so um, that's where you know we used all the the drums that we tracked from Grohl and uh, a few other like guest cameos and stuff. But then. Um, you know, life got in the way of life and I was filming a TV show and then doing book tours and launching a makeup line. And I just kept putting the album on, on the back burner. And so then finally uh, I sold my makeup line last year in order to make room for this tour and uh, be able to refocus all my attention onto music. And, um, and then obviously like the lockdowns happened. And so at that time, my band just moved into my house. We have like a, a two bedroom, like little bungalow in the back. And so they brought their cats with them. And we basically said, hey, let's just take this time to like focus um, on doing all of the stage design. And, uh, you know, we have a contortionist in our band. So we were writing different interludes and intros for, so that Bryn could dance while we go have an outfit change or whatever. And so we started writing and making these really cool so sounds and songs. So we said, hey, let's remix the album together. We have the time. You know, we thought it was going to be two weeks at first. It turned into like months and a year or whatever. So we just we we ended up working together and like going through all the songs together as a band. And it was such a bonding experience. And I think that um, although I am really extremely proud of the version I did with Adam, uh, I feel like this version that we're releasing in August is like where my heart sits. And um, but I think it's like, it's two different flavors, you know, and I, I'm excited to share both to see what people respond to. Yeah, it's going to be exciting. I'm sure it's going to sound completely different. Um, you mentioned that you started writing this record 10 years ago, or from what I understand, you started writing music 10 years ago because somebody you were dating yeah. sent you a record in lieu of a conversation somehow. And then you decided the best way to reply was to send a record of your own. Yeah. So is, are these those songs? Yeah, yeah. So I... I don't really think about that guy <laughs> anymore, but, um, but you know, we, we just, my husband and I, we laugh about it. We're like, all these songs are about my cat. <laughs> right, 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 right. Yeah. So, oh, that's it. So when you, yeah, but, but you know, I think, I think that that's, that's how like art is in general. You know, when I think about my tattoos or, um, or, you know, songs that you're writing at that moment, they're just landmarks in time. And I think you, you tend to process feelings and experiences through, through those moments. It doesn't really, take away from them like once you've processed them you know right. and um I, I, i'd like to think that i continuously keep growing so i'm not going to be the same person i was when i wrote them uh 10 years ago but you know when i do sing them i still feel the sentiment of you know what i felt back then and i think that's a it's a beautiful thing it is a beautiful thing so far we've heard three songs from the record right so exorcism was the first single the second yeah. was i am I'm nothing not which obviously struck a chord, it's a deep, <laughs> deep chord. It's about not feeling like you're enough for the person yeah. you love. And I look at you and for lack of a better word, I'm like boss, right? Like everything <laughs> you do turns to gold, project after project after project, you succeed. But then you delve into these lyrics and then there's this vulnerability and you're yeah. like, all right, she's, she's just a human. Talk to us yeah. about that side of you and sharing it with the world in these lyrics. Yeah, well, I mean, I think uh, heartbreak and love, like, don't really care who you are, you know, right. <laughs> the outcome is going to be the outcome, regardless of, of, um, you know, how, how well you do in other aspects of your life. And, and you're right, you know, like, I feel like my kryptonite has always been love, you know, I think everything else I, I, I feel in control of, and 
um, I find extreme joy in. And then, you know, and, and of course I'm speaking like prior to my husband because uh, we, we do we do have a pretty magical marriage, which is great. But like, but you know, prior to, to Raphael, I was in nothing but dysfunctional relationships. Basically uh, my pattern, like if you were to put all my exes in a lineup, they don't look the same. I don't have a type, you know, like my type was like, I guess you could say is like daddy issues. <laughs> oh God, that's not a good type. <laughs> So I mean, I had this like a lot of I dated for some reason a lot of guys that had a lot of abandonment issues and 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 in turn would reflect into how they treated who they dated and so um, you know and I think I think a lot of that was really good for me to like look in, into myself you know because you know I could sit here and be like oh he cheated on me or oh he's a bad person but what is it about me that continues to keep choosing these guys that are so toxic, you know? And that's what I took, like, I took about, um, at one point, like three years of celibacy where I was like, I'm not gonna date, I'm not gonna, you know, be intimate with anybody and just like really focus on myself because I'm tired of seeing the same movie over and over again, you know? And, um, and you know, those things have to happen. So I think you're right, you know, there's, when I wrote these songs, I wasn't writing with the intention of anyone else listening to them except the person I wrote them for. And so it was easy to be vulnerable and honest. Um, and, you know, when I talk about I am nothing in particular, you know, I, I notice the response to that song more than all the other two songs is like, um, there's just a lot of hurt out there. You know, I think a lot of people sadly can relate to um, the feeling of not being good enough for somebody and um, you know, being Sisyphus going up that mountain, you know? <laughs> so, um, so it's like, it's a part of me feels like, oh man, I hate that, that it does resonate. But at the same time, when I wrote those, th those lyrics, I was really alone. So I feel like, Hey, if these songs make someone feel less alone, that's, that's pretty awesome. And was it after the three years that you focused on yourself that you met your husband? Was that like, right yeah, after? Pretty, um, yeah. I mean, it was, you know, I, I think I, I think I um, relapsed on on terrible men for like maybe two rounds, and then I met my husband. <laughs> Fair enough. You, you had a little more to get out of your system. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and you know what? I still I still have stuff I work on. You know, I'm. We're, I don't think you're. I'm not. I don't know if I'll ever be enlightened. I highly doubt it. But um, but you know, I think that's that's okay too. <laughs> that's awesome. So the new single is enough and. It sounded like that was written from the perspective of somebody who was in a relationship with somebody who was borderline verbally abusive. Yeah. Or verbally abusive. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so there's only two songs on the record that I didn't write. Um, there was there's a duet that I did with Peter Murphy uh, from Bauhaus, which which to me was like the biggest highlight of that entire experience because I'm such a huge Bauhaus. I'm a huge Peter Murphy fan. Um, that was like the cornerstone of my music influences growing up. So. Um, so, you know, Peter wrote all the lyrics to that. Um, as far as, um, it's actually written by a, a really talented guy named Chris Brenner. And so at the time I was, um, my neighbor was Danny Loner from Nine Inch Nails. And so we were hanging out um, every day, pretty much during the writing process. And he played me this, it was like a demo version of Enough. And he said, yeah, I just have this really talented friend. He's actually a photographer. He doesn't really like, you know, he's not um, like known for his music. But I just loved the song so much. I, I've been to Hong Kong, but not when it's raining. Like in, the, in the lyrics, it says like Hong Kong in the middle of a rainy day. And I was like, so it's fun. Chris and I be, have become friends since then. And he was just telling me like, oh, like this, that was just like, you know, when I was going through a huge big breakup. And I just, I really loved that song. I loved, um, I didn't change the lyrics. I didn't adjust it because I thought it was perfect as is. I was going to ask you about the song with Peter Murphy, because that one was one of those that kind of stood out lyrically. I was like, she's telling all these stories about yeah. kind of like love and heartbreak. And then there's this one. And I wondered how it tied in to kind of, so yeah. it makes sense that, yeah. You know, well, it's it's funny because, you know, one of my favorite, all time favorite bands is this like kind of obscure, well, they're obscure here in the US um, from Sweden. Uh, they're called Kent. And like, um, I love them so much. I have every single record. They, for a minute, they were doing some albums in English and then some of them were, most of them, all of them were in, in Swedish. And I always loved the Swedish versions better, even though I didn't know what the hell they were saying. I don't speak Swedish. So like, um, but that's the beauty of things that like transcend language. Um, like same as with Sigaros, when I listened to that, I don't really know what it's about, but the sentiment is there. And that's how I feel about the Peter Murphy song. Like I have no idea what he's 
referring to in those lyrics. And I would, you know, I, if you ever interview him, you should ask him. Um, for a long time, we called it the dolphin song because, you know, he talks about dolphins and we're like, I don't know. <laughs> but but I don't know, when you listen to it, you totally get it. I know I, know I do. <laughs> I was like looking at the lyrics, listening to the song and I love a direct lyric, which is why I was really yeah. enjoying Love Made Me Do It. I'm yeah. like, I know where she's coming from. I yeah, feel this. Yeah. And then we got to the dolphins and the yeah. and I was like, oh, she lost me there. A little bit. <laughs> <laughs> I was wondering. Like, but I, you know, I love that, that it's so abstract because most, yeah. you know, most of like, Peter Murphy's songs and lyrics are extremely direct, you know? Yeah. And so like this, this to me was like such like, a, kind of like a weird art piece. And um, and like the Adam Noble version is like a lot more driving and a little harder, but the the synthwave version that we did for, for the album that we're releasing, I love it because it's just one of those driving songs. You're just like driving to the end of the world with it, you know? It is um, a beautiful song. It's yeah, it's beautiful. cinematic. So, I mean, obviously that, that's not one that we would slate as like a hit, but to me, it will be like one of the gems that are on the album. Agreed. And then obviously his voice is just so epic. Like, I feel like when I listen to that song, I'm just waiting for him to come in, you know? <laughs> <laughs> it all makes sense now. Yeah. <laughs> um, I think it's track 11, Better Song Than Said. Yeah. I wonder if that's how you genuinely feel because you're so good at expressing yourself creatively through all yeah. these outlets that I kind of wonder, is, is it kind of like a blind person that they can't see? So all their other senses are <laughs> so much sharper <laughs> that makes sense yeah I, that was actually the first song that i actually wrote uh, ever um with, with linda um and um so basically you know going back to what you were saying like why i started doing this album i was like in a this type of unrequited relationship unrequited love type relationship with a guy in a band that lived overseas and when he sent me that album he sent it with a note that said um these are all the things that are easier sung than said and, you know, I think we had one of those things where, well, I, I know I know what it was. It's like, I think, you know, if you don't play, you don't risk the chance of losing, you know? And so we we just had this thing that I think we wanted so badly, but we're just too afraid to, to, to get close to. And, um, and, and I don't think you can live off of that, you know? I mean, I know I can't. And so, you know, you could write me a million albums, but what's the point if, if it can't ever become a reality, you know? And, um, so, so that's why I named that song that it was basically just when you listen to the lyrics, it's just about like, um, just not having the, the courage to just having said it out loud, you know, and just being afraid that, uh, afraid of, of, um, failing, you know, is that a pattern for you, I guess, is what I'm wondering to not maybe always say it out loud. No, I think that, and, and, and I think maybe that's why I wrote this song for that particular person um, was because unlike every other relationship, I was always just like, you know, a million hearts on my sleeves, you know, yeah. <laughs> dripping in blood. But, um, uh, but you know, and, and I, I don't have a problem with telling somebody how I feel and, um, and going forward with that. I think, uh, I think with this particular person, I just was like, um, I don't know, uh, there's a, a, a huge sense of fear, you know, I don't know what the, if it's just a matter of like, um, you know, well, I, I think it was just like, I just didn't want it to be real because I would f it up eventually somehow, you know, um, okay. which is sad and it's kind of psychotic, I think. Yeah. <laughs> it's well, like, you know, so, so when you listen to that, it's like about missed opportunities and like how many missed opportunities have we had in life where we could have just said things out loud and just, um, you know, not been afraid to, to fall. Let's move on. I want to talk about one of your, I want to talk about a couple <laughs> of your bandmates actually. Um, uh, Greg Foreman shared in that video that you yeah. shared the behind the scenes meet my band video. Yeah. He said that, and obviously yeah. he's been making music for years and decades. And he said that he's learned yeah. a lot by working with you. So I wonder what you've learned working with your bandmates. Cause I know you guys are super close. Yeah, of course. Well, I mean, I'll tell you, I'll tell you what, like I am not computer savvy or technology savvy whatsoever. Like I know how to write a song and I know how to play the piano and other than that, I'm, I feel like I tend to be useless, you know, and I think uh, having a band experience is so nice to me because now I'm learning about the uh, technology aspect of things, even like the production side of things, which is nice. I don't think I'll ever produce my own music just because I think I'd rather leave it to the masters. I think, um, you know, I've been around bands a long time. I've uh, been on tour many times with my friends' bands and exes and all that stuff. And I see like the worst dynamics, you know, like people who are jaded and bitter and just um, hate each other and 
and I've always been from like the camp of like, make it a family, whatever you do, make it a family. Like when I filmed my TV show, I was like best friends with my production. Like I loved my camera guy, my audio guy, you know? And, um, and so, and I really see that happening with this band and I hope, and I hope it remains that way. You know, like um, I think a lot of people would take the route of just stealing the entire spotlight. But uh, for me, it's, I see it more like, like a superhero, like, like a Power Rangers, you know, like, like every, you know, there's some people that love the yellow Power Ranger more than the red one. And, um, and that's how I've been, you know, when, when I, like, I love Ace Freely more than Gene Simmons, you know? <laughs> oh, Gene is going to have a problem with that. I think he's no, gonna I, have- <laughs> hey, I love you, but here's the thing. You can't, you can't, Kiss is nothing without all of them. And that's, that's what makes them strong, you know? But what I'm right. saying is like, instead of just putting them in the shadows, which I think that happened with my bandmates in, in the other projects that they've been, it's like, here, I'm going to put you guys up front and there's going to be a, a really bright spotlight on you. Yeah, and yeah. Um, and I think people love that. Like I can already see like some people like are just obsessed with Sammy, you know? <laughs> some people are obsessed with Dave and, and a lot of people are obsessed with Greg's hair. <laughs> I mean, how are you not obsessed with Bryn and her I know. contortionist? Ability? So I have yeah. a question about her. So she is officially a part of the yeah. band, yes. but she doesn't yeah play an instrument no although she's she's learning how to play the whip so on exorcism when you um when you if you listen to like the the drum sampling that we did we actually used a real whip sound for that and so um we're like hey you got to learn so she's actually like taking classes right now on how to play a whip and so um so you know and and there are instruments that she's going to be playing during our live shows whether it's like Uh percussion and things like that but her instrument is her body. Like she, she moves like, I mean, some of the things she does, I just can't even comprehend. And, but, but to me, it was all about like bringing the visual aspect of storytelling because I love that when I go see a band play and it's not just a guy in a cardigan standing at a mic, you know what I mean? It's like, um, you know, there's showmanship, but there's also like real intention behind um, each song. So we, uh, I teamed up with Linda Strawberry who I did a, a music video for I'm Nothing with. And she's like the creative director for Smashing Pumpkins and for a few other bands. And her and I, we just, we love a lot of the same aesthetics. We, le- we love the beautiful things, but we love the macabre and just the darker things. So um, I, I believe next week we, we are slated to start filming all the visuals. So, um, you know, there's gonna be a light show, there's gonna be a visual show, and then there's gonna be these moments with Bryn as well. And it's, it's part of the storytelling. And so I'm, I'm so excited about playing live more than anything. <laughs> Which is coming up, right? So at the end yeah. of September, you have some, I think you called them warm up shows. There's yeah. four in total. So you are, you're, you don't have any nerves about just being no. you. Oh, oh no, we're, we're excited. I mean, we were ready to go last fall until everything got halted, obviously. But, um, and now it's just a, it's just a matter of, um, you know, doing all the routing and, you know, hopefully like South America opens up because you know, that's like, I don't know if you know, my family's from Argentina, I was born in Mexico. But um, so to me, those are like the motherlands, you know, like to be able to go back to Latin America and, um, and, you know, really play for for my hometowns. So, um, you know, we'll see, we'll see. And obviously, Canada's still not open. So right now we have routing for Europe in May. So we have like a month, month long tour, a little bit over a month in all of Europe. And then uh, we'll start um, the US in February, March. Your husband's band is going to be the special guest on the four yes. that you have announced. I, I'm assuming you'll probably take them wherever you go. Yes. Um, but I wonder what was his role in the making of this record? Like this, besides supportive husband, would you go to you him? Know, the, the, to be honest, and people have asked this before, but there, he has not had a role. And it's because these songs were written so long ago. I mean, they were, they were really finalized prior to us being together. And, um, but, you know, he's working on his new album and I sing on some tracks of that, but we definitely do want to do some more collaborative stuff together for the second album. And we are writing the second album right now, um, me and the band. So, I mean, we've already started sketching out demos. So, um, you know, I definitely plan on including him not only in the process, but also he'll probably be the center of a lot of the songs, you know? Right. Um, (laughs) The next chapter of your life. Yeah. And I I did read that you're going to try to put or you want to put some Spanish songs on the yeah, next album. Yeah. Charo? Yeah. What? Yeah. What? Coochie Coochie? <laughs> I think she's yes. going to be on. What? Yes. So I'm doing a, a, a duet with, um, well, it would be, I don't know if you want to call it a duet, but there's the Spanish song that I'm, I've always been obsessed with. It was written originally in the 1940s, but like people all in the seven done covers of this specific song. And it's a classic song from Spain. And so it's called Los Piconeros. 
And so we, we've we already recorded her guitar and now we just gotta do some vocals, but um, I'm, I'm so excited for a music video for that because I feel like everybody sees Charo in like pink sequins all the time. And I'm like, how about a Gothic version of that? You know, oh like my. I wanna see Charo in all black. So, um, so yeah. We'll, we'll see, yeah. You think of cleavage, very short, yes. like the hair. We're still keeping the cleavage, yeah. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> yeah. Um. But yeah, so but we are writing other songs in in Spanish as well. So so what percentage of the record do you think will be in Spanish? I think there'll be two or three songs. Two or three. Yeah. Well, actually, wrap on this. Yeah. What was your reaction when you first heard "Love Made Me Do It"? This new remix, like front to back. You know, um, it was such a satisfying. I remember the day. Like my bandmates, we have so basically in my house we have the pink room. Uh, we, it's just, it's all pink. And uh, it's where we have all of our synthesizer set up and um, and Dave's like um, MPC player and all that stuff. And we, Exorcism was the one that was the biggest pain in the ass. For some reason, we did like six different versions of it and it, nothing was sticking. And then finally it just came together. And so that was like the last one. And when when we were done with her, we were like, let's listen to everything from the beginning. Cause we already have slated the, the order that I wanted it on the album. And we listened to it all and it was, um, there was no hesitation, you know, normally like even when I'm tattooing or drawing or, or, or writing a song, it's like, there's always like a moment where you're like, oh, we could, let's tweak this a little bit more or let's, you know, you don't know, like it's not time to walk away yet, you know? And we sat there and listened to, through the whole entire thing and nothing was said. We were just taking it in and we were all just so excited and proud and we just knew, it's like, you just know. <laughs> awesome when you know you know you know what I am gonna ask you one more question I feel yeah. like if I don't ask about Dave yeah. Cole like people yeah. will explode because he's such a <laughs> mega superstar yeah. um he's known as the nicest guy in rock was he super nice when you were like tattooing him and oh yeah causing I mean, pain to his life yeah oh my god he's like such a like pleasure to be around you know I think um my story will be the same as everybody else's he's just like a great genuine person you know and and hilarious as hell you know yeah. so um I mean I remember too like I think he got into like a motorcycle accident like you know months after I tattooed I tattooed these like feathers on his arms and he just sends me this gnarly photo of like just his arm looked like it was mauled by a tiger and he's like do you think you can fix this <laughs> <laughs> I think you need a doctor Mr. Girl yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's totally. awesome yeah All but right. you know what I love about him though is that like as far as being a drummer goes like um there's a lot of people that can get pigeonholed and I think for him it's like he's such a versatile player like I was you know when I told him I was making music he was like oh my god I want to play drums on it I'm like okay cool but you should listen to it first because you might not like it you know and and sure enough like he listened to it and he responded to it and he's like oh I know what to do and it's like I love that you know because I think for me I'm not I'm not that versatile you know I wish I, maybe I will be in the future but like I'm kind of like set in my ways I'm a little bit of a music snob I like what I like you know yeah. and uh, he's he's just like here let let me lend my genius to you in this way you know so um yeah it's it's a it's a pretty um it, it was pretty impressive like there's a reason why why he's so magical yeah We'll wrap on that. Love Made Me Do It, the debut album by Kat Von D arrives August 27th. Very exciting. Hoping you'll come back and speak to us once the record is out. And then once it's at number one, you'll come on here. We'll celebrate all that yes. good stuff. <laughs> I would love that. Hey, thank you, thank you so time. much. This interview has been my favorite this month. Seriously, like thank the best you. questions ever. Thank yeah. you, Kat. I appreciate cool. that. Have a great awesome. day. Thank all you. Right. Bye.